So this is our second topic. The title of the topic is what is a network? We look at the objectives first of all of this topic. After the completing this topic, a student will be able to provide a general definition for a network. The figures and the materials that we will use in this topic, they have been adapted from computer networking first step, which is our first textbook. textbook. So we first of all look at what is a computer network. A computer network is a combination of hardware, software, and cabling, which together allow multiple computing devices to communicate with each other. So the computer network gives the computers the ability to communicate. This is a diagram of a very simple network. This small network is being used by a company at a single site. For example, if you see this diagram, we can see there are a couple of users, user one and user two, and they are connected over, the, in, over this cloud to the server, and they are also, they can enjoy the printing facility. So for example, if you see this user one and user two, the diagram depicts here, I use files on the file server and print files on the network printer. So both these users, they can access the files from the server. They can also use the printing services from the printer. If I look at the simple network, these are the basic components. The first of all, there's a cloud in the network diagram, which is used to hide the details such as hardware, software, and cabling. We use the cloud whenever we are least concerned about the detail. And we, when we want to show a simplified diagram of the network, we will prefer using this kind of cloud. A server uh, provides some kind of a service. For example, uh, it will allow user one and user two to access files from the server over the network. What is behind the cloud? If we see the details of the cloud, we can see this kind of diagram. User one is sitting in a cubicle in his one of his offices. User two is also sitting in one of the offices of the company, which is located in the same building, right? And then we have a wiring closet, right? Then there's a secure room. The server is located in the secure room. Then we can have a common area where we can place our printers. So in this diagram, if you see the wall plate has been shown here, the switch is depicted here. We have a couple of PCs shown and a server is also shown in this diagram. If you want to explore what user one's PC has, the user one's PC must have some kind of networking software. It should be installed on it, right? And then furthermore, a user a user one PC should have a cable that connects his PC to the socket on the wall, as we have seen in the previous diagram. That socket has a cable on the hidden, hidden other side of the wall, which is hidden from us, right? The cable runs, the cable may be running under the floor, in the ceiling, or some other hidden place, with the other end being in the wiring closet. What, what is located in the wiring closet? It's the point where all the cables from the computers, they run. All the cables connect to a switch, which is located inside the wiring closet. What is a switch? A switch consists of specialized hardware and software. So it's a combination of the hardware and software that forwards the network traffic back and forth between the various network devices on the network. So if you see the previous diagram, we can have, we can see that user one can access the printer with the help of this via this switch. User one can communicate with user two with the help of the switch. User one can also send message, can access the file server, the files from the server. What does this switch contain? This switch has a lots of places which we normally call the switch ports into which you can plug in one of the networking cables as we have seen in the previous diagram. Now we look at what are the what is the perception of the network? There are different people employed, which keep which maintain the network. So different people have different they work on the different aspects of the network. That's why they have their own perception about the network. We can broadly categorize the networking people into three different categories. These are the different categories. For example, the first one is the server guy. We can we can have the cabling guy who's also named as the electrician, the network guy, who's also the network engineer. Now we look at the responsibilities, the rules of these people one by one. First of all, the server guy. The server guy is responsible for the server. He needs some PC hardware skills, but more importantly, he must, he must know, 
he must have some strong skills with the software, how to install the server on the machine, right? He has to do the software installation, that is the server. He must test if there's some problems face, faced by the server. He must be able to test it. He must have the administration and troubleshooting capabilities. So he should be well equipped with these kind of skills. What is the perception of the server guy? The server guy might not know what's the, on the other end of the networking cable. For example, this is the perception he will have. He can see some clients, he can see the server, and the other nitty gritties are hidden from him. So we can see this, is, this cloud here is uh, labeled as the network utility. So the server guy, he views the rest of the network as a network utility, whose idea is to treat the rest of the network just like you think of the telephone, electrical power, and the water supplies, and so on. So we do not have to consider, we do not have to go into the details how they are implemented. We just, we are not bothered about it unless they stop working. When we talk about the cabling guy, the cabling guy runs the cables from the each cubicle back to the wiring closet. He's also, he's also named as the electrician. What, is it, what, are the, what are the responsibilities of the cabling guy? His job requires physical dexterity, knowledge of how to confirm to the electrical building standards and willingness to get a little dirty when running the cables under the floor in the ceiling or through some other hole in the wall. So this is the perception of the cabling guy. The cabling guy perceives that the network is only the cabling. Here you can see that the network cabling is running under the floor from one cubicle to the wiring closet. And you can, can see this, that he focuses only on installing, testing, and troubleshooting the cabling from each wall plane plate to the wiring closet. This is the job of the cabling guy. Furthermore, the cabling guy makes sure that there's a working cable running from the wiring closet to each place in the building where a computer needs to connect to the net network. The cabling guy, the wall plate simply provides a physical plug into which the cabling guy can connect a short networking cable from any computer. Now we look at the, the responsibilities of the networking guy. The network guy is, who is also named as the network engineer, is responsible for the switch as well as any other hardware and software used to create a network utility for the computers. He will install, he will support and troubleshoot the hardware and the software on the switch. The network guy needs to know where each cable runs. However, he ignores all the difficulties the electrician went through to get all the cables run. The network guy knows which computer's cable plugs into the various numbered ports on the switch. For example, if you see here, cable coming from user one is connected to port number one. The cable coming from user two is connected to port number two. The server has been connected to port three and the printer is connected to port four of the switch. And this concludes our topic number two.